Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this brand new discovery of a completely new asteroid that actually breaks a few records. An asteroid known as 2021 PH27. The asteroid was, as always, accidentally discovered while looking for something entirely different. And an asteroid that takes approximately 113 days to complete a single orbit around the Sun. Making this the asteroid with the shortest orbit around the Sun, and also potentially an asteroid that created a completely new group of asteroids that we didn't actually know existed. While also an asteroid that seems to possess some really extreme conditions on the surface, especially when it gets really close to the Sun. And so let's talk a little bit more about this, because a lot of these near-Mercury asteroids are quite rare, and a lot of them have also been discovered to possess really interesting properties. But first of all, how exactly was this found? This beautiful observatory in Chile known as CTIO, or Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory, is part of the Dark Energy Survey that contains what's known as the DAC Cam, also known as Dark Energy Camera. And even though the main purpose of the survey is to study the mystery of dark energy, it's already been able to discover some incredible objects out there completely by accident, with this recent asteroid being one of these objects. And so in mid-August, Scott Shepard, who's already known for discovering quite a lot of different minor planets, saw another unusual never-before-seen object moving quite fast and extremely close to the sun. This tiny tiny dot you see right there. They only had a few days to analyze its orbit, but in that time they discovered that this seems to possess the closest orbit of all asteroids discovered so far, and based on the luminosity produced, represented an asteroid that was about 1 kilometer or maybe a little bit wider than 1 kilometer in size. With the initial calculations suggesting that it actually comes much closer to the Sun than Mercury, with the shortest distance here being about 12 million miles or about 20 million kilometers, or as you can see here, roughly around half the distance of Mercury, with the epiphelion, also known as the farthest uh, part of the orbit, taking it slightly farther than the orbit of Venus, but obviously never reaching the orbit of Earth. With the orbit sort of looking like this. Now notice how when it's really close to the Sun, it moves extremely fast. And at this point, it's also extremely hot. Currently, the belief is that the temperatures here reach about 500 degrees Celsius, or approximately 900 degrees Fahrenheit. But it only stays this hot for a few days, moving farther and farther away relatively quickly. And because it moves so fast around the Sun, it currently is invisible to us, it's actually hiding behind the Sun, so we're only going to be able to calculate its orbit even more sometime in 2022, so it will actually take a few months for it to come out to become visible again. Now, generally, it's extremely difficult to find these asteroids. With the main reason being our Sun. It sort of hides many of them. The luminosity of these asteroids is so tiny compared to our Sun that trying to find them orbiting around the Sun becomes practically impossible. As a matter of fact, they only become visible during twilight, either right before the Sun comes up or right after the sunset. And even then, you have to get extremely lucky to try to capture these asteroids and to try to calculate their orbital parameters. But because many of these asteroids end up crossing planet Earth at some point as well, especially the group known as the Apollo asteroids, whose orbit you see in green right here, they represent an extremely dangerous type of an asteroid that we actually have to study really well. As a matter of fact, the famous Chelyabinsk meteor from 2013 that created a huge explosion above uh, the city of Chelyabinsk represents one of these Apollo asteroids, the asteroids that orbit very close to planet Earth and extremely close to the Sun as well. But currently there are a few more interesting facts about this asteroid. First of all, because it actually comes really close to the Sun, it ends up experiencing the highest Einsteinian precession effects. The effects that were used to explain the unusual precession of Mercury approximately 100 years ago. And so this unusual effect from the general relativity ends up shifting the orbit of this asteroid by roughly around one arc minute per century per hundred years. Now it's not a lot, but it means that after about 6,000 years, this right here will most likely be pointed this way toward about 100 degrees. And so this precession can entirely be explained by Einsteinian theory. At the same time, its orbit in general is already quite unusual and somewhat difficult to explain. Especially if we try to figure out where this object came from or what family it belongs to. So generally there are four major families of asteroids relatively close to planet Earth. We have the Apollo asteroids I mentioned previously, with roughly around 1700 of them being classified as potentially dangerous, with some chance of colliding with planet Earth in the next thousand years or so. The largest one is, by the way, Sisyphus, which is about 7 kilometers across. 
We also have the Amor asteroids that orbit around Mars and tend to only cross the orbit of Mars. But then we also have the more dangerous Aten asteroids that tend to stay in a relatively similar orbit to our own planet, as well as the Atira asteroids that tend to orbit within the orbit of planet Earth. And at the moment, this right here would classify as Atira asteroid, but because of its unusual orbital properties, it most likely represents something entirely different. And there's actually one good reason for that. Look at this from the side. It seems to have a very large inclination of at least 30 degrees. And interestingly, even though here it looks like it comes pretty close to orbit of Mercury, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, the closest approach to Mercury is approximately 0.1 astronomical unit, or approximately 50 million kilometers away. It actually comes closer to Venus once in a while, at a distance of about 2.2 million kilometers. And its orbit on top of this is not expected to be stable and most likely changed over time and will change again. Currently it's believed that it's going to actually either collide with the Sun, Mercury or possibly even Venus. Although none of this is going to be happening for the next few millions of years. It's still going to be in orbit for quite a long time. But going back to its origin, because of this really high inclination of 32 degrees, it's sort of right now suspected that this could have been some sort of a comet in the past. Possibly a comet coming from really far away, maybe even from the Kuiper belt itself, and eventually, as it moved closer to the Sun, it might have passed by one of the terrestrial planets, very likely either Venus or Mercury, but maybe even Earth, and this changed its orbit, turning it into this unusual object we have right now. And so until further observations in 2022, it's most likely going to be impossible to tell where this object actually came from, but it definitely seems to be quite unique compared to a lot of other asteroids. Interestingly enough though, this is not the closest asteroid to approach to the Sun. There's an object known as 2005 HC4 that comes even closer to the Sun, the distance of about 0.07 astronomical units, or about half as close as this. But because this asteroid also goes really far away afterwards, it seems to have the highest speed, highest velocity of any asteroid in the solar system. At the closest approach, it moves at about 157 kilometers per second. And although there are comets that have slightly faster speeds once in a while, from all of the asteroids, this is definitely the fastest. Nevertheless, 2021 PH27 currently holds the record for the smallest semi-major axis, or essentially an asteroid with the shortest orbit around the Sun of about 113 days. Mercury has an orbit of about 88 days. But when it comes to the discovery of this asteroid, there's actually something else I wanted to mention. Something in regards to this unusual type of asteroids that has been hypothetical for almost a hundred years now. The type of an asteroid referred to as the Vulcanoids, named after the hypothetical planet Vulcan. Although in this case, the Vulcanoid asteroids do have a potential to exist. They would exist extremely close to the Sun and in a very stable orbit, somewhat similar to the orbit of the asteroid belt, but in this case, enclosed inside Mercury. The thing is, it's extremely difficult to find any of these objects. And though theoretically they can definitely exist and have been proposed to exist by many different scientists, as of today, pretty much every search for these asteroids unfortunately did not return anything. But because of the discovery of this particular asteroid, there's maybe now a chance to potentially discover them after all, simply because this particular asteroid does actually cross the region where these volcanoids are believed to exist. Interestingly, the famous American planet scientist Alan Stern, famous for being the primary investigator of the New Horizons mission to Pluto, has even gone so far as to use the U-2 spy plane that's able to fly extremely high in the upper atmosphere to actually try to discover these objects by looking at them during twilight period. And this was done back in uh, the year 2000. And since then, unfortunately, no volcanoids have been discovered. Even the NASA stereo satellites that are famous for watching the sun pretty much 24-7 have so far been unable to discover anything in that particular orbit. At least nothing large enough, nothing larger than about 5 kilometers in size. There has been at least one study that suggested because of the effects from the sun, such as the Yarkovsky effect and the pressure from the solar radiation itself, over time a lot of asteroids will probably start spinning really fast and fall apart, creating a lot of smaller pieces orbiting in the region. And so there could still be about a thousand or so smaller rocks, possibly about 1 kilometer in size, that are just extremely difficult to discover. Or maybe all of this created something similar to the Saturn's rings, something extremely well shredded, really small in size, but once again, very difficult to detect. 
And so by studying these extremely close to the Sun asteroids, we might be able to find the Vulcanoid zone after all. Especially since this definitely passes through it. But I guess until future discoveries, or until we learn something else about this particular asteroid, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.